Okay. <clears throat> so, this one is going to be, to sum up, it's going to be crunchy players versus casual players. That's a weird statement. And it's going to be a little more nuanced than that. But to sum up that statement first, crunchy is, you know, more complicated players or systems. The type of player that, like, sees a class, like, sees a class or, you know, race combination or whatever it is. Like, okay, if I do this, I can, like, get this option. I have this thing to pick down the line. Then I have to choose these options. And then, you know, the more, what a lot of the time I'll refer to more as like a more optimization focused player, somebody that really digs into what their what the system is capable of, regardless of whether, uh, or regardless of how complicated that system is. Um, and then a more casual player is someone who obviously doesn't. They don't need to make the, they don't care about these types of choices as much. That's not really what they're there for. That's not what they're at the table for. And I've played in, I've been playing for a little while now, around two years. And I've played with one group most of that time, but I've had little smatterings of other groups um, and other players. And in particular, a little bit of a dichotomy stands out. In one of my groups, there's a player who is much more, I guess, I'm gonna say, casual and more roleplay focused. Um, they know who their character is, they know what their character is doing and all that, and they roleplay really effectively when they can get into it. Um, they also seem to have some attention span issues, but um, that's a separate thing. Um, but then when it comes to like actual mechanical stuff, they're mostly playing relatively simple characters. Like for a whole like 15 session campaign, they played a rogue. And almost every session couldn't remember how sneak attack worked. And whether that's just couldn't remember it, couldn't pay attention long enough to retain it, wasn't interested in retaining it. Like they're just not interested in this combat stuff or they don't feel like retaining it and they know the rest of the players around them will help them out instead, which I think is a really negative quality, if that's the case. But I can't be sure of what that is. Um, just, they're not really interested in the options that a player, that you really have in the class. Like, they don't really go, oh, okay, now I can do this. They don't, they don't react that way. And they don't dig into that. And that's fine. Um, and then another player, which also kind of digs into this, another player in, there's some overlap uh, with various tables, but, and groups of players, but this player is another person that I play more, I'm gonna say complicated video games with, like fighting games, all that stuff. Fighting games are some of the more complicated game systems out there. There's a lot of homework to do. And this player has, over the course of a long time that I've played with them, they've managed to get into the system and they function just as, like, more than well enough in a fighting game system. But as they've gotten into 5e, they seem to dig into the options, but while they're, I would call them, relatively crunchy. They get into the options, but they don't necessarily suss out what the, like, what the value of the different options are. So they, like, dig into it and they make a character with all these choices, but all these choices don't do anything together. There's no synergy. There's no focus on the character. There's no plan. There's just, they just picked a bunch of options that sound cool. Um, and then some other players, one of the, another player I play with, um, is much closer to the way I go about it. There's a bunch of options. They come up with an idea. They choose options that focus towards that goal of, uh, you know, 
whatever the character's goal is in combat and in roleplay and whatever, and they pick options that support that. Um, they are a much more crunchy player. Much more optimization-focused. Optimization They're going to pick the cool, good options to let them do stuff. And this is a pretty wide spectrum um, from one end to the other. Um, and at the end of the day, I think tables either they can be made up of all different types of players, but you're going to run into a little bit of friction because, you know, like, let's say you have two players that really love combat and the complexities of combat and all that type of challenge that comes along with it. You've got another two players that are much more roleplay focused and much more casual when it comes to mechanics. And then the DM is also much more casual when it comes to mechanics. You know, those more combat focused players aren't going to get as much out of that situation. So they might either leave the table, the DM could change and try to include more complex combat, or the players could adjust to lean into the role play and the more casual aspects a bit more. I'm not saying role play is a casual aspect. Don't, don't worry. Um, or ideally, it's a blend of those last two options. The DM, you know, it's like a little bit of compromise. The DM leans into more complicated combat a little bit more, and the combat-focused players lean into the role play a little bit more. Yeah. But I think tables can be made up of all types of players. It's just a little trickier, but. Also, you can have player tables that are made up. The DM and all the players are all on board for the same exact thing. They all want to just role play all fucking day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's a dichotomy, or not a dichotomy. There's, you know, there's a gradient. Like, and every player is a little bit different. Like that second player I mentioned that plays fighting games, digs into systems. I find that they, and I'm not trying to discredit them or talk shit about them or anything like that, but this is just a kind of observation. They'll dig into a system, or they'll, or they'll start to dig into a system, and they'll usually find like one or two good options, but they don't, um, they either don't worry about, or they don't bother trying to understand the system as deeply as they can before they start making choices. And I'm like this too. I'll just start to dig into it. Like, I can't look at a system and understand it. I have to play the system. So I'll just pick an option and just do shit. Like, if I'm starting a new fighting game that's like a good deal different, like with Pokin. I jumped into, into Pokin, which is different than a lot of other fighting games. Instead of learning the system by playing a more neutral character like Lucario or some other character, I just jumped straight into Garchomp, who's like a run-canceling, like, unique mechanics out the ass type of character. I just jumped into that instead of, like, learning the system as a base. Um, because this player in question. Um, there was one little one shot that I played, or it was like, it was a two shot that I played with them and they made a warlock that was a very weak character and weak is subjective in 5e, but we are making like level nine ish characters, I think. And the character they made just ended up being really weak because warlocks get more choices than a lot of other characters or a lot of other class, classes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the options they chose basically just didn't really work together. Um, they chose, like, you know, they chose, like, Pact of the Blade. Um, they had, they chose Pact of the Blade, Fiend Pact, Warlock, didn't really choose much. They chose one or two like melee supporting options, 
but then didn't, but then like forgot to use them. They, which, you know, that's a thing. You're, people forget stuff, but like they forgot to use the options. Then they chose other options that don't really help that. Um, and then they misunderstood options as strong when they're not. Like, they misunderstood certain things. Um, like the, the Fiend Pact, whenever you kill something, you can gain temporary hit points. That's not that strong of a feature, especially for a melee-focused um, warlock. Like, one... It's not a huge amount of temporary hit points, and the rest, well, actually, let's say the feature is okay, but the subclass it's on doesn't do anything else to support melee combat. You don't get medium armor, which this character did have enough decks to get a decent AC, but it really wasn't, it still wasn't enough. Um, then they chose like daggers, which are the weakest melee weapon as their, uh, as their main option. They didn't have any spell choices that augment their melee attack damage. They didn't choose any invocations that augment their melee attack damage, which I don't think they really can. They chose two weapon fighting, which is like, especially for a warlock that doesn't get a fighting style, is an extremely weak option. Like, you know, there's just a lot of these types of things, a lot of these types of choices, and they just misunderstood, due to lack of experience with the system, like, what's good and what's not. And I don't fault them for that. Like, that's just a thing. Like, that's also how I play the game. Like, I try to just jump into the system and see, see like, just make something and see if it's good. But... At the same time, if you're playing a one-shot, and especially if you have other players that you're playing with that know the system, that's a resource to help you understand at least a little bit. Like, maybe not make your character for you, but say, hey, what's good for this type of thing I'm going for? Like, just that kind of question could have been, would have been enough. Like, if, if they had asked me, like, hey, I want to make, like, a melee warlock. Like, okay, well, you can pick Hexblade, so you can focus on one stack, get medium armor, blah, blah, blah. But, um, and that's, and each of these types of players will learn, end up learning differently. Like, I might have done a similar thing, but I tend to try to consume some resources first, like, maybe not build guides, but like some system guides to help me understand the system more directly. I read through the, through some stuff. I look at, I like, I try to figure out like, okay, what's a good amount of damage? Like how much damage does this character do at this level? Like, you know, try to figure that kind of stuff out. Learn how the math works, but because I'm a more crunchy player. But this also kind of gets into um, a very related topic, but not the exact same topic, like affinities. Um, different players will have affinities for learning different types of things. This kind of relates to how there's like different types of intelligence, like, you know, one person is really good at learning biological sciences, but they suck at math, you know, things like that. Uh, that's a real simple, really close example. Or someone who's very athletic, maybe they're really good at, you know, hockey, but they suck at baseball. Like, you know, there's just certain systems and information, different groups of it. You have an easier time learning this group as opposed to this group. And there's no real explanation I have for you for why that is. It's just like you're good at this thing and not this thing. That's all. Or even within, you know, in different video games. Like, you might be good at, you know, third-person action games like Devil May Cry or something, but you suck at shooters or the opposite. Or you're good at platformers or, you know, whatever it is. 
Like, you just have different affinities, and certain things come naturally to you. Um, so, that's, uh, you know, a, a person can be super intelligent, like, you know, have a master's degree in neuroscience or whatever, and then when they sit down at the table, they can't fucking remember what a spell, what fireball does. Like, what does fireball do? One of the simplest spells in the game, one of the most ubiquitous ones. Sit down, like, what does this do? What do I roll? Like, you know, and maybe it's not just affinities, maybe just the player doesn't have that much attention span to, to that much attention or focus to, quote, spend on learning the system. But, yeah, I guess, I guess that's mostly it. Uh, and I guess, more or less, there's no, there's no shame in that, like, having different learning systems. Like, I would never do something like that. Like, I learned this system, like, I learned 5e pretty quick. Because I'm relatively, you know, I like learning systems. It's not that I'm good at it, it's that I enjoy it. So I put more time into it. Whereas for other player, other people, it might feel more like homework. So they don't learn the system. Even though they might be better at learning and retaining information than I am, theoretically. I don't know who this person is. <laughs> but that's kind of the idea. And... You know, there's a lot of factor. There's a lot more factors than just this. This person smart and this person dumb. There's way more factors than that. So, yeah, that was an extremely long-winded rant on some different player types.